Now, to discuss about insulin therapy, I have brought to you three different case scenarios. So if you look at this first one, we have we have a 50 year old gentleman who has type 2 diabetes for eight years and who has been on metformin and bildagliptin with a fasting plasma glucose of 180 and a post prandial glucose of 196. In contrast to that, we have a 58 year old lady who has been having diabetes for 12 years, having a fasting glucose of 168 and a post prandial glucose level of 286. She is currently on metformin 2 grams per day and glimipiride 6 mg per day and also citagliptin 100 mg per day. So what is the type of insulin that we are going to use in this lady? As compared to a 26 year old female who is in her 8 month of gestation with a fasting glucose value of 88 and a post branded post breakfast glucose value of 172, post lunch value of 184 and a post dinner value of 164. So these are three different scenarios where we are planning to initiate insulin but again what we see is that the type of insulin that we're going to initiate is going to be different in each of these individuals. So coming back to our patients who needed insulin, we see that the first patient for him the best option was to start on basal insulin. A single dose of glargine was started at 6 units per day and he was doing his self-monitoring of blood glucose every 2-3 to three days depending on the glucose levels. He was updating the dose of insulin and after 12 days he came back with a fasting glucose of 102 and a post prandial glucose level of 136 showing that he was he had reached the glycemic targets that we had defined for him and his uh, dose of insulin that he was using was 12 units of glargine along with the OADs that he continued to use. So we see that with a single dose of basal insulin he could achieve the glycemic target in this individual. Coming to the other patient, both her fasting and postprandial glucose levels are high and she is a type of patient who is not going to be controlled with just the basal insulin because her postprandial glucose also needs to be addressed. Therefore, to provide convenience and also address both the fasting and postprandial glucose levels, we started her on premix insulin in a dose of 12 units before breakfast and 8 units before dinner. We stopped the glimiparide while continuing the metformin and citagrim. She was given ad advice on titrating the dose every three to four days. She came back after four weeks with a fasting glucose of 106 mg per DL and a post prandial glucose level of 154. The insulin dose that she was using at that time was 20 units in the morning and 16 units in the evening. So once again, we see that this patient who was having both fasting and post prandial glucose levels being high was managed very well with the premix insulin and she was quite comfortable in taking the insulin twice a day and she was also monitoring her glucose levels and adjusting the dose of insulin as per the requirement. Then we have the third situation. So here what we see is that the main problem is the post prandial glucose control. So the major problem in women during pregnancy is the post prandial hyperglycemia and that correlates very well with the macrosomia and all other complications that happen during because of hyperglycemia during pregnancy. So this patient was started with a rapid acting analog like more rapid which was given four units before each meal and she was again advised to do titration of her dose depending on the self-monitoring glucose values which she was seeing. She titrated the doses to six, mini, six units in the morning, eight units in the afternoon, four units in the evening and after a week her fasting glucose was 90, post breakfast value was 118, post lunch was 120 and post dinner value was 116. So once again showing that in this patient, we just needed a post prandial coverage with a rapid acting error. So we have seen with these three different scenarios, we have seen how insulin initiation in a patient with type 2 diabetes can be dependent on the needs, the requirements of the patient. It has to be highly individualized and different patients with type 2 diabetes require different insulins for the initiation and the titration of the dose after initiation is also very important and once done properly we can achieve adequate glycemic control with appropriate use of insulin and using a dose that is required. Now another point that I would like to highlight before closing the uh, discussion is about hypoglycemia. Patients should be educated about the symptoms of hypoglycemia and the need for 
knowing about this because whenever we start insulin we should educate them about hypoglycemia the hypoglycemia can be said to be present when plasma glucose values are less than 70 mg per dm clinically significant hypoglycemia is one where the value is less than 54 and severe hypoglycemia is a situation where there is uh, where there is additionally alteration in the mental and uh, status and uh, the patient requires assistance for treatment of hypoglycemia we should also educate patients about the ways in which they can prevent hypoglycemia the diet the, the timing of the diet the timing of the insulin the timing of exercise that needs to be done not immediately after after the injection and the, and the fact that glucose monitoring is very important to understand and prevent hypoglycemia and adjustment of medication may be required when hypoglycemia happens the aim is to achieve the best reduction in hbnc without causing hypoglycemia and when hypoglycemia occurs how should it be treated it should be treated by ingestion of glucose or fasting carbohydrates a rule of 15 has to be applied ingest 15 grams of carbohydrate fast acting carbohydrate for non severe hypoglycemia and for 20 mg 20 grams of carbohydrate for severe hypoglycemia in asymptomatic patients treatment advised is within when the glucose levels are between 63 to 70 the hypoglycemic is called the hypoglycemia alert range recheck the blood glucose after 15 minutes of giving the carbohydrate intake and if the level is still less than 70 repeat the treatment once blood glucose stabilizes consume starchy snack for maintenance of the glucose levels and avoiding hypoglycemia where can you get these 15 grams of carbohydrate fast acting carbohydrate it can be a few pieces of small pieces of fruit it can be half a cup of fruit juice one tablespoon of sugar or three to five candies or four glucose tablets and while we advise about insulin we should also advise patients to continue their lifestyle modifications so i would like to end by summarizing and saying that timely insulin initiation is beneficial and, and the best option it has in terms of achieving glycemic control and the various insulin regimes are available and we need to decide about which one suits our patient whether it is the basal insulin single dose of basal premixed insulin or it is only the prandial insulin that may be required in some scenarios insulin analogs are more physiological and offer additional advantage of achieving the desired glycemic control with low risk of hypoglycemia and proper dosing and timely titration is essential for better outcomes and lesser side effects thank you everyone for joining today's 10 minute cme hope you enjoyed the session and got some take home points which you can implement in your day to day management of patients with type 2 diabetes.